In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. We have before us today two stories about messengers who come bearing God's words, Amos and John. One, a self-denied prophet and a keeper of sycamore trees, the other, an evangelist and a baptizer. Both righteous men whose faith in God was lived out as they courageously stood before those in positions of power and spoke God's hard and life-demanding truth. For John and for Amos, God's call to follow and proclaim his words was too powerful to deny, despite fear, despite the risk. The passage from Amos recounts a truth-telling moment between God and Amos, where God appoints him to go and to tell the house of Jeroboam that its ruling days are over, that it will be ended by God's own might. So confronted, offended by Amos, Amaziah, the priest of northern Bethel, speaks with a righteous, self-righteous arrogance on behalf of the king, as he tries to dismiss Amos and send him away, suggesting that this pseudo-prophet ought to just go back to where he came from and preach there. In the gospel, we hear about Herod. Herod, who was unable to take God's invitation to heart, nor to integrate it into his own life. It was inconceivable for Herod to move beyond fear and vulnerability, being able to admit and face and reconcile his private actions with John's message. John called him out, and he could not reconcile the two. And so in a move to placate the powers that be, Herod imprisoned John, hoping that he might silence that good news, hoping that he might keep it from spreading. And Herod kept him close, so close that he might continue to hear for himself the truth of God's redemptive love, even if he never accepts it for himself. He is intrigued. But keeping John close proves to be most unfortunate, on a night when ego, revenge, power, seduction, and saving one's own face becomes more important than the life of a human being. Each of our stories today herald a message that someone would rather not hear. These are quite simply horrific texts. But we mistake things, we make a mistake if we judge God by these texts and not the actions of the humans. In other words, these texts speak to our human nature. We are the ones who need to listen and to hear and to heed God's call. God has laid out a straight path in front of us And the expectations of God for us are not exceedingly great. In fact, God's expectations for us often appear to be pretty basic. For what are we to do, ultimately? We're to love. Yet how that plays out in our lives can be tremendously difficult. Like Amaziah, we might find ourselves defensive and lashing out when someone dares to suggest that the way in which we are living or acting isn't measuring up to God's expectations for us. And like Herod, we might find ourselves dancing someplace between our faith and our fear, not knowing where we will land, not knowing for sure what might tip 
the scale one way or the other. Sometimes, like in Jeroboam's kingdom, what we see around us as good and righteous and successful, dare I say normal, God sees differently. God sees exploitation. God sees injustice. God sees God's people gone astray. We can find ourselves in the thick of our lives with no long view, unable to step back and take stock of what's happening around us or our part in it. And without the ability to assess and reflect on both our own behaviors and those of others, we may find ourselves trapped in living and reliving situations that are less than life-giving. Maybe you found yourself at the mercy of a bully, silenced by them into submission. Maybe you found yourself witness to the behavior of another that is unkind or inappropriate or downright hurtful to someone else, but you have found yourself unable to speak up. You might have even found yourself so certain about your own ideas and how things ought to be that it is you, it is we, who refuse to give voice or space to others who differ from us, whose opinion is not ours. It is into these tender moments of humanness that God sets a plumb line a standard for how we are called to follow and to live. And across the centuries, from Amos to Herod and from Herod all the way into our own present moment, God continues to set the line. And the line is this, obedience to God, obedience to God's justice and love for all people. On either side of the beheading story, we find stories of the disciples being sent out by Jesus, being sent to feed the 5,000, coming back to Jesus to tell him what it has been like. But there here in between is this story. It's a story that illuminates for them clearly and for us the truth that there is risk in being a moral and ethical person. There is risk involved in standing for justice. There is risk involved in spreading God's love through teaching and healing. John the Baptist spoke his truth to Herod and to Herod's wife, and his truth-telling cost him his life. Just like Jesus' truth-telling cost him his, and just like many a martyr to follow Jesus. And yet, God reminds us, Paul reminds us, fear is not the final word. Faith is the final word. Because you see, it matters. It matters what we do with the words that we hear today in this place from these texts. People's lives and their well-being and the world's well-being is counting on us. They're counting on you and me. They're depending on our daily commitment to practicing and living out God's way of love in the world. When we set our attention on God, on God's call to us to do justice, on God's call to us to courageously speak God's truth to power, even when it's uncomfortable or scary, we can trust like Amos, that it is God who speaks through us. It is God who works in us, and it is God who loves us and is with us and guides us. We are not alone in this. It is then that we might come to understand that God's wrath is not a punishment. It is not designed to make us afraid. Rather, God's wrath is an expression of God's own suffering and grief that arises out of humanity's indifference for one another and out of humanity's failure to take a stand against 
injustice. Former President Jimmy Carter said of the quandary between acting on faith and acting out of fear, these words. I have one life and one chance to make it count for something. My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I am, whenever I can, for as long as I can with whatever I have to try and make a difference. Had Amaziah, Herod, or even Herodias heard the voice of the messenger from a place of faith and not fear, how might their lives have been different? Truly, we can only speculate. But what we can imagine for ourselves is how our own lives might be transformed by hearing and listening to the voice of God's messengers who speak God's words to us, not as a threat, but as an invitation. An invitation that we might listen, that we might hear, and that we might follow. And thus, that we might discover what happens when we put our full trust in God. Paul tells us in Ephesians that we have inherited God's love. We have inherited this destiny that in hearing God's truth and listening and receiving it and believing in it, we are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit and we are given the promise of life beyond this life, redemption. The invitation our text places before us today is twofold. First, to follow and trust in God's power and love. For it is God's power that has the power to change us. It is God who gives us strength and courage to stand for justice and to speak God's truth to power. And second, we are invited, as we are, to put our trust in God and to do our very best to let go of our fear. To let go of the barriers and the things that get in the way between us and God and that deter us from hearing and listening both to God and God's word, but even maybe even more importantly to the people around us the people who show up in our lives, who speak truth into our listening, who are vested in helping us grow and become who God intends us to be. The truth tellers that sometimes we find hard to hear. There is an old spiritual that says, we've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, we can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. May we walk in faith like Amos and John. May we trust in God's power to open our ears and our hearts so the fear that we may feel can be transformed into strength, into courage, into hope. Amen.